right, for our third chapter, we're going to talk about map processing. And I'd like to once again acknowledge the GIS Commons that we'll be using as a kind of a guiding framework for the way we're organizing the lectures. And so we'll be covering part three of that. And part three is on map processing. And really, this, these are considerations for what you need to do to modify or pre-process your data um, to make it usable for analysis. So GIS data oftentimes has to be, um, uh, you have to consider if it's appropriate for what you're going to use it for. And you may have to do some things. You might have to change the coordinate system. You might need to do some pre-processing functions change the projection, resample it, and so on. And then you, once you've done things, you may need to also do some verification of the GIS data, uh, identify and edit errors, and do some conversion between different types of data. So we're going to go over that. But first, we're going to uh, talk about latitude and longitude and map projections. Okay, so we talked about this a bit in the introduction. Um, math, you know, the absolute location of things, mathematically locating. How do we mathematically locate features? We do this um, either using latitude and longitude, which are spherical coordinates uh, for the whole Earth, or we project those to a map projection. And we convert a round Earth to a flat surface and then we can use um, plane coordinates, X and Y, like in geometry. And those X and Y coordinates are either going to be in, they're going to be in real world units, either in meters or feet. Okay, so latitude and longitude, these are spherical or angular coordinates. Again, latitude is zero, goes from zero degrees at the equator to 90 degrees at the poles. And it has 180 degrees east and 180 degrees west um, from the prime meridian, which is kind of an arbitrary line through <clears throat> uh, Greenwich, England, where the system was devised. Okay, and so in the introduction, we talked about the system in general, but what I want to talk about here is the way is the use of latitude and longitude in practice. So traditionally, we measure it using degrees, minutes, and seconds. So for every degree, so there's zero to 90 degrees to the poles. And for every one of those degrees, it can be divided into 60 minutes. And then for every one of those 60 minutes, they can be divided into 60 seconds. So kind of like an hour can be divided into 60 minutes and then each minute can be divided into 60 seconds. Um, except that instead of time, we are covering bits of angle in this case. So um, degrees can be divided into 60 minutes, a minute can be divided into 60 seconds. Now, uh, where you might see this um, in practice is um, the sometimes map series will be identified as something minute series or um, so, for example, U.S. Geological Survey topographic maps are what, what are called 7.5 minute series. And what that means is that is, um, remember, there's 60 minutes in every degree. If you divide that by half, it'd be 30, and six, a quarter of 60 would be 15, and then an eighth of 60 would be 7.5. So 7.5 minutes <clears throat> is one eighth of a degree. So what that means is that each one of these maps covers an area that's one eighth of a degree in longitude by one eighth of a degree in latitude. Okay. Now, traditionally, I say traditionally because we don't, in practice, there's different ways to describe latitude and longitude. So the traditional way is degrees and minutes and seconds. And then you could have decimal places after these seconds. It's called degrees, minutes, seconds. Um, you could have what are called 
let's just jump to the bottom. Decimal degrees, this is where you turn the whole thing into a, a, a single decimal number. So you don't have all the fancy symbols and the letters, but you have a whole number. And this is more practical for using in a computerized environment. And then there's something in between. You could have what are called decimal minutes, where it's a, how many degrees, and then the minutes, and then some decimal places. Now, the, the decimal degrees is probably the more um, important one because uh, we can actually plot decimal degrees in a flat environment in a GIS. And the way we do that is that we can pretend, have this sort of pretend grid where it's going, you know, where it's positive 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees, positive meaning north, negative meaning south. And the grid can have negative 180 degrees, meaning the west direction, and positive 180 degrees, meaning the um, east direction. So let's just kind of walk through that. So Clovis Community College is at 36 degrees, 53 minutes, 13 seconds north, and 119 degrees west, uh, 43 minutes, 51 seconds. So it would be kind of like about, that'd be about 120. So just, it'd be about along this line, pretty close, and up about, just above 30, so it'd be kind of about here if we were using this kind of a grid. But we couldn't really place it in this grid because it's in this fancy format. So what we can do is we can convert from that traditional degrees, minutes, seconds to a more usable decimal degrees. And there's a formula to do that. It's the degrees plus the minutes divided by 60 plus the seconds divided by three, um, 60 times 60 or 3,600. So in this case, just do, let's just do the latitude to keep it simple. The latitude of Clovis Community College would be 36 degrees plus 53 minutes divided by 60. So that would give you a that would turn the, instead of minutes, it would be the decimal part of, of 36. Uh, and then plus the seconds, we would add those in as well. And that would be 1 60th of 1 60th, so 13 here divided by 3600. And so we would turn this number into this in decimal degrees. And it'd be a positive number because it would be north of the equator. It'd be 36.8869. So remember, it would be, um, you would have a negative number if you were south of the equator for latitude. And if you were, um, if it was west of the prime meridian. So here's some examples on a globe. This might be, North 71, East 84, or positive 71, positive 84. Here, if it's uh, west of the prime meridian, the longitude would be negative, but the latitude would be positive because we're north of the equator. Here, they're both negative because it's both south of the equator and west of the prime meridian, negative 49, negative 3, and so on. So again, this would be kind of our, our grid here. And the prime meridian goes through, this would be London, England there. If it's west of there, it's negative. East of there, positive. This would be the equator down here at zero degrees. North of there, positive. South of there, negative. So Clovis Community College, the latitude is 36 degrees, 53 minutes, 13 seconds. And longitude is 119 degrees, 43 minutes and 52 seconds. So with the latitude, we did that one already. It's 36 plus 53 divided by 60, um, plus get the seconds in there, 
13 divided by, because they're um, 1 360th or 3600 degrees, it's 13 divided by 3600. We calculated that number already. Now for the longitude, we do the same thing, but because it is west, it's going to be a negative number. So we can multiply it times negative one in this case so that we get a negative number because the negative is because it is west. East would be positive, west would be negative. So if we calculate that out, this latitude and longitude becomes this decimal degrees, 36.8869 and the longitude would be negative 119.7311. If we highlighted this and Googled it, Google actually understands what we're talking about and would show you like, oh, this is a coordinate on this map, which would be about where AC1 is, where we are. All right, so going back again, um, our, we want mathematical locations with, um, we can either use um, latitude and longitude or, or projected coordinates and with real world units, which will be in meters or feet. If we have latitude and longitude that is in a different format, like if it's in des um, from degrees, minutes, seconds, there's a mathematical way to go from one to the other. So this is just a little, this is from a textbook, um, kind of a cheat sheet of how to convert from degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal degrees and vice versa. And in, we might have a, a problem or two in our take home test on converting this. So we'll go over this a little bit in, in the lab as well. <laughs>